Today's lesson is going to be an introduction to sets. So what is a set? It's a container that stores values pretty much like a list, but there are a few differences. First of all, in a set, no value will be duplicated or will be there more than once. So it's like this stamp collection. You won't see the same stamp twice. In a list, you can often have the same value, and you can even have the, a list of all the same values. But in a set, no value will be duplicated. Also, the values are not organized in any particular order. You know in a list that there's an index, and you know exactly where an element is, and you can access it by position. But there is no position in a set. It's kind of like taking all these stamps and just putting them in a shoebox. They're all there, and you can sort them and find things, but there's not a set position. And because of this fact, it might seem counterintuitive, but the set operations actually go very quickly because it's not in an ordered set, in an ordered way. The sets in Python are just the same as sets that you would do in math. So if these diagrams look kind of familiar. You know, we have subsets, we have unions, we have intersections. You can do the same thing with sets in Python that you do in math. What can you do with sets? Well, you can do um, many kinds of projects like you would with lists, but if you don't care about the actual position and you just care about what the set holds and its relationship to other sets. So you, um, there's just different kinds of problems where a set might come in and be more convenient, easier, and faster to use than a list. When you're going to use a, a list, first of all, you have to create it. So there are three different ways that you can create a set. One way is to use the curly Q brackets. So you know in a list, you use the square brackets. For a set, you're going to use the curly brackets. So you can just declare it if you know what the elements are in your set. But a lot of times, you're going to be doing them randomly or you know asking the user for numbers. So this is one way, but it's not always a practical way. You can also take a list, so you could create a list by asking the user for numbers or doing math or random numbers. You know how to create a list. You can take that list, list and use the set function to change it to a set. So that's kind of a convenient way. Another way is just to start with an empty set, and this is how you declare an empty set. You're still going to use the set function, but with no argument. And then you use the add. So in a list, we had append. And for set, we have add. And then whatever value is in your for your argument is what you add to the set. So I could have multiple adds to create my set. I could also use this in a loop to get a random number and add it to my set, similarly to how I would do it to a list. Once you have your set, there are several set operations that you can use to manipulate your data. So there are several methods. Remember what a method looks like. You've got your dot notation. So we have add, discard, and remove, which is similar to pop and that we had in and pop and remove for list. And we have clear. And then here's some specific set functions such as or methods such as union, difference, and intersection. So you're thinking about sets. These are things that you do with sets. Okay, we also have functions. So we have the set function that creates a set. Sorted, which is similar to sorts and len. So len is one of those functions that you can use for a variety of different data types that will tell you how, how many numbers, how many elements. Okay, and then we also have in and not in that we had also for a list. And then we have equals equals or not equals. So you can compare two sets to see if they are the same. You can see if an element is in a list or you can use this to traverse a set um, like for printing. What can you do with the set? Well, you can store data in any order. You can look for data in a set. You can create subsets. You can look for common elements. You can look for different elements. You know, so there's just a variety of things you can do with sets. Um, similar to what you would do for the list, but a set would do it easier and more quickly. So to get you started using sets, I'm going to have you create an intro set to sets program. And we're just going to do these few things that are listed here. You're going to create a set from a list. So create a list and then change it to a set using the set function. Create a set just by adding, similar to how you do a list. Print both sets and then compare the sets and print the results. So your output might look something like this. So I've created a set from a list. I've created a set by adding. 
And then here's all my different results. So I can say the length, how many elements are in each set. I can combine the sets. I can say the intersection, and I can say the differences. And notice when the set is combined, when I've done the union, that there are no duplicates. Okay? So even if both sets had the number one in them, when I do a union, there is just one number one. That's one of the um, facts about a set. Let's get started. You're going to be in Code Sculptor, and the first thing you need to do is create a main function that is going to do all the work. Then you're going to create a function for the first set. So this, remember, this one is going to be creating a list and then changing it to a set. So first, create a list with random numbers. You know how to do this. We've done this many times. You can use a for loop. So for x in range and how many numbers do you want in this, get a random number and then append it to the list. And then at the end, you will change the list to a set using the set function and then return the set. So this function will be a return function. Call the function in the main function. It will look something like this. So don't forget to import random. And then remember, if when I'm creating a list, I have to start with an empty list. And I'm going to just generate some random numbers and append it because lists have append. And when I'm finished, I use the set function. And I've just called my first set alpha. And I'm going to return it. Since this is a return function, when I'm calling it in main, I have to assign it to something. So I'm assigning it to alpha. You can go ahead and try that. Use incremental development so that you can make sure that this part works. Now you won't really see it working because we haven't printed it yet, but as long as you don't get any errors, that's a pretty good sign. Now for step two, you're going to create another function, and this time instead of creating the list first, we're just going to use the add method and create the set as we go. You're going to return the set and call it in the main function. So remember, since it's a return, your, the call is going to be similar to the first function call. I'm not going to show you that here. You should be able to figure that out. So when I'm creating my second set, instead of creating an empty list, create an empty set. And then you can still use your for loop, get a random number, and instead of append, you're going to use add. And it's just really that simple, and return your function. Now will this give me 10 random numbers in my set? Not necessarily because the set is not going to have any duplicates. So when I'm getting my random numbers, if I get a duplicate, it's just not going to add it to the set. So this, although the first one had started with 10, when I changed it to a set, it's going to take out any duplicates. The same thing here. So even though I'm getting 10 random numbers, that does not mean that my set will have 10 numbers in it. In fact, it probably will not. For step three, you're going to create a function to print the elements in a sorted set. This is going to be very similar to what you did when you printed elements in a list. Um, the code is really basically the same. You're going to use the in, and you're going to traverse the set. You're going to include a print statement in there. So besides just printing the elements in the set, also print what set you're printing. And you're going to call this function in the main twice because you have two sets. So you're going to uh, call it for alpha and call it for beta. And this is an important step in your incremental development because you haven't really seen if your sets worked yet. But once you have this print function, then you'll be able to see that your sets are created. So your print function could look something like this. And I've got just a generic name for my set. I didn't put alpha or beta because this way I can put either one here. Either one will be my argument. It gets passed into my parameter. I am going to have a message, so it could be set 1 or set 2, or it could be alpha, beta. I'm going to print which um, set it is, and then traverse. So remember how this looks when we did it for a list. I'm going to use sorted, and um, it will print everything. So my output at this point should look something like this. Uh, or I could say set 1, or I could say alpha and beta. And you can see that neither one of them has 10 elements, because there must have been some duplicates. We'll never know. All right, step four, you're going to create a results function that will perform set operations and print the results. So here's some examples of some set operations that you could perform. You can print the length of each set. You can print the union. You can print the intersection. You can print the differences. 
Okay, so the length is just going to use the len function that's all set. These three are methods, and they actually return another uh, set. So after you print the length, when you're doing the union, intersection, or difference, you're actually going to be doing an assignment statement. So you're going to assign to a new set the union, and assign to the new set the intersection, and assign to the new set the difference. You're going to have these three new sets, and then you can call the one print function that you already have to actually print the new sets. So for each result, use the set function or method and then print it. You're going to call your results function in your main. So for my results, I, I passed in both of my sets as parameters. And then, so here's my, uh, where I'm using my methods to create new sets. I have combined in both. Um, these are the differences. And this is how you're going to call the different methods. And there is a difference you can see here if I did alpha first or beta first. For combined, it shouldn't matter. And for in both, it shouldn't matter. And if you're not sure, try it a couple different ways and just see. And I'm using the length. And then I can use the print set no matter what. I just have one function for printing. And I'm just going to pass in a different set with a different message each time. So you're going to call this in your main function and your output should look something like this. So I've got my first two sets and then I've got all my results. And it should be different every time you run it because you're getting random numbers. So you want to, this is going to be the minimum, get this much to work and then if you have time keep learning about sets and how to use them. So try doing more things. There are other set operations that you might want to work in, like maybe you generate a random number and just see is it in the set, yes or no. And there are some other things that you can do with sets that you cannot do in Code Sculptor. So you can read about it in the text, but if something isn't quite working right, remember that Code Sculptor is kind of a subset of Python and not all the methods and functions are working in Code Sculptor. Um, they all work in idle, but they don't all work in Code Sculptor. So just kind of keep that in mind too. Get your program to work correctly. Make sure you have your header and everything like that, and then you're ready to turn it in. So have fun learning about sets.